Glory, glory, and glory, and glory, and glory. What a time. What a time. What a season. What a move. Getting ready to go into a whole new world. But first, we must dismantle something besides ourselves. We aren't seeing the process right now. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. You know, again, we talked about 90 days. Amen? You know, some people aren't going to make it. In fact, some people couldn't make it already. <laughs> 90 days. Remember, the word says that judgment first comes to the house of God. So if it comes to the house of God, so it can come to the world. So we're watching God's judgment, not wrath, judgment come to the world. Amen? Why? Because he's not only shaken and quaking, but the body of Christ is going through the fire to be purified. And as we continue, you're going to watch, not even after 90 days is a specific time, but then after that, I'm going to tell you something strange. Things are going to get worse. Things are going to get crazy in the, for the world. Those who make it through the 90 days that are get in position and hold fast are going to prosper. The world is going to suffer. It's going to have earthquakes. It's going to have famines. It's going to have plagues. It's going to have pestilence. It's going to suffer. Its purpose is to awake. Does everybody understand? Same thing with Moses. What happened to the Pharaoh and the Egyptians? They were plagued, weren't they? To what? Awake. To awake to the one and true only creator. He's going to destroy the gods that proclaim themselves as gods. He's going to destroy all their images. He's going to destroy their witchcraft. I'm telling you, we're entering a time where there's going to be a melting of demonic forces because the presence of God is going to take over the earth. This will be for a period of time. For a period of time. Prosperity will be released. See, there's still more exposure to be done. Amen? There's still a lot more exposure. I don't know if you heard about China. They got busted with all of their gold. You know what it was? Not gold. It was wrapped in gold. Oh, they're hurting bad now. Their banks are folding and everything, man. They got busted with fake gold. The greatest scam ever. Come on, man. This is what's happening right now. It's all over the world. Satan's being exposed and all his corruption and destruction and those regimes that serve him. It's happening. We are in a time right now it's just awesome. But we've got to be prepared. We've got to be willing to do whatever it takes. We've got to let the fire purify us. You can't jump off the potter's wheel just because it feels nasty. You got to let God deal with you. You go through the fire, the first thing he exposes is what your desires are. Anything that's compromised, the desire for him is offensive to him. Amen? It's offensive to him. Well, what about this and what about that? What about nothing? He's about everything. What can we do that God can't? Amen? <laughs> He's trying to reveal himself to his people in a mighty way. See, people got plans. Everybody's got a plan somewhere along the line. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing about planning a little bit. I hate planning. Amen? I mean, <laughs> planning stinks. But there's a certain area where you've got to plan a little bit shortness. But you must be willing to allow your plan to go to dust and allow his to come to life. See, that's where people are still fighting for their plan and don't even realize it. When God's trying to bring their plan to dust, they're keeping it alive. And it brings chaos. It brings confusion. It brings frustration, and it promotes the flesh. The flesh. Oh, glory. 
<laughs> Woo -hoo. So there's a dismantling going on. Again, I talked about self, but there's a dismantling of Babylon. There must be a dismantle of Babylon to succeed. Babylon, the process of dismantling Babylon, exposing, pushing back of the wicked influence to rescue and to create a large, large, large harvest. It will be the largest catch of souls in history, even more than the book of Acts. We can't comprehend that. Remember, the books of Acts was... Short, small. Amen? It's now the book of Acts Global. We are at a time where we are now in a prophetic crossover into a new age of reality. We have been living under the rule of Babylon, Babylonian system controlled by deception, fear, and lust. Again, they maintain their authority by service to the prince of power of error. By shedding human blood, sacrificing abductions of children and abuse. That's why we have wars. There's abortions. Think about it, abortions. Abortions have been going on for centuries. It's been offering to Moloch, false deity. They used to run their children through the fire. Actually, it used to be a statue of iron. And they would put a child on the burning arms of this iron and watch them fry, scream, until they died. That was running, putting them through the, ch through the fire. <clears throat> yeah. We are watching right now not only all of the things that are happening, but the false media. We are watching suicides. We're watching influence of technology. Amen? Amen. All kinds of weird fashions going on. You don't know whether they're human, animal, whatever. It's all a promotion of lust, love of money, and greed. People are looking for fame to self to promote self. We are in transitional times in preparation for the return of the Lord and the removal of his bride. Amen? Right now, there's, we are entering a time where the unveiling of hid, the hidden world of advanced technology and dimensional interstellar life forms. They will be coming. They'll be forming. They'll be promoting them. They're nothing but the fallen angel race. There's right now, there's great deception. Tremendous. We are entering strong deception, but there's great deception. You know, Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japhet, before the flood, again, Ham married an offspring, a Nephilim, blood in, of an angel and human. Giants began Nimrod. After the flood, Nimrod built a tower as close as he could to heaven. I think he ran out of mud. Or laborers, I don't know. Hallelujah. Nimrod was the son of Cush, who was the son of Ham. Again, Ham married a Nephilim. So we see that the Nephilim bloodline of the serpent bloodline came down through him. We see a parallel here. So, giants begot Nimrod after the flood, built towers to heaven, and he wanted to be like God as a Nephilim ruler. Amen? His wife and mother were known as the queen of heaven. They paralleled, paralleled themselves in the area to where we see Catholicism. With a virgin birth, a great deception. That's what they were proclaiming. That she was visited by God and had a child. Nimrod was born on December 25th. Jesus was conceived on December 25th. 
and born on a feast. Remember, everything associated with daddy is feast, feast oriented. If it's not feast oriented, it ain't the Lord. Amen. Don't let, don't let people tell you all kind of goofy things. If it's not feast oriented, that's why they're called the feast of the Lord and not the feast of men. I truly believe Jesus was born on the feast of trumpets. Hallelujah. That's nine months from there, then you got what? <laughs> Hallelujah. It, nine months back, you got December 25th. He was conceived. Again, all Babylonian system, Roman, Roman system are all ruled by Antichrist false deities. Just like the Pope, who's a false deity, thinks he's the only one that can communicate with God. There's a place for him. The Vatican. If you go to the Vatican, you can see all statues of all kinds of things, even Greek gods. This parallel to all the areas that hold authority in countries. United States, the, our, the White House, um, all the pillars, everything is parallel to it. In fact, if you really look deep into it, it's got a shape of a serpent. The Pentagon is actually a pentagon. Think about it. <laughs> God dismantled the Tower of Babel. And Jesus did, dismantled his spiritual rule by descending into hell. Does everybody get that? Taking the keys away of authority from Satan and giving them to his true followers. There are those who call themselves Christians who cannot activate the keys. Why? Because they're not connected. They're true followers of his doctrine his voice, and most of all, his presence. The Babylonian system still rules the earth with its Nephilim offspring of Antichrist spirits and human bodies. That's what we're dealing with. In Revelation 17, So we are in right now, this is what God is using, the dismantling of the Babylonian system. It's dismantling of Babylon. They must be pushed further back so Christ can establish more of his kingdom. It is the great awakening. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus always, he was reminding me about when he went into the temple. And what did he do? He went into the temple and kicked over the tables. He exposed everybody's stuff. He said, this is play, you're, you're to be a temple of the house of prayer, the house of God, not, the house of, and not a place of holding a den of thieves. Amen? Think about what was in the temple. They were all selling goods. They were using the temple to make money. In Revelation 17 and verse 1, let's speak it. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I'll show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And, she, and he carried me away into the spirit, into the wilderness. And I saw the, a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus 
And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast who carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the what? Bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life. In other words, they will be the ones who are deceived because their names are not written in the book of life. Why? Because they've already rejected Christ. From the foundation of the world, when they see the beast that was and is and, is and yet is, we see here they will marvel in great deception because they are veiled from the truth by the lies, just like today's rehearsals. We are in a rehearsal time to get the world in lockdown with fear. To kill, steal, destroy anything of the truth in Christ. To, to forsake and prevent individuals from assembling like we are now. Do you know that they can't do this in other places? So let me ask you this, if the body really was standing up and did it regardless of what, there isn't enough jails to hold us all. And not only that, we'd be back by the righteous leaders and the righteous attorneys. But there's too much fear that's affecting even the body. This is what's separating the bride from the body. Oh, Hallelujah. See, again, these, <laughs> this is all ruled by antichrist entities in human bodies. People don't realize it. They have a form of godliness, but deny the power, don't they? In fact, they don't want God at all. They denounce God. Isn't that what Lucifer did? Isn't it what the demonic forces do? And John 6. They are veiled from the truth by the lies that they've accepted. Oh, happy days. So if you think you're going through it, <laughs> just think what the world's getting ready to go through. But the hope is that the people of the world turn towards the Lord. In verse 51, John 6, 51. Remember, we are in the process of dismantling Babylon. Amen? The Babylonian system, pushing them back for rescue. That's why you're going to see much more stuff. God is bringing the body through a purification, through the fire, for 90 days. Why? Because if they can stand the next 90 days, they can stand. He's looking for dedicated. He's looking for sold out. He's looking for disciplined. He's looking for consistency. And he's looking for people to get the heck out of the outer court into the holy place. Glory. Verse 51, let's speak it together. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give his flesh to the eat? Then Jesus said to Moses, Surely I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I'll raise him up to what? Last day. See, there are people who say they are Christians but do not drink the blood nor eat the flesh of Christ. They only use the word 
Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. That's not a Christian. Because a Christian is to be Christ-like, not worldly-like. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. He said, for my flesh is what? My flesh is what? My flesh is what? Food. Indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Wow. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Will live forever. That's why Jesus said, feed on my faithfulness. Amen. Feed on him. The blood of the spirit is what you worship. You drink. Amen. The flesh of God's words is what you eat. Again, antichrist deities, servants of darkness, they drink human flesh, drink human blood, and eat human flesh to survive their positions. That's how they maintain position and authority. 1 John chapter 2, dismantling Babylon. How do you dismantle something people don't know? You expose it. That's what, see, there are so many things that people are going, man, I, I don't, I, why isn't anybody doing something about this? Why isn't anybody doing something about this? Why isn't anybody doing something about this? I've been the same way. Why isn't anybody doing something? Then it, oh. Fluorescent lights went off. Because <laughs> God is doing what? He's allowing them to expose themselves. So don't freak out that nothing's happening because it is. Oh, yes, it is. Come on, they just arrested the uh, uh, Epstein's uh, right-hand woman. Or maybe she was left-handed. I don't know. About First John chapter 2. Verse 15. Oh, yeah. Do not what? Love the world or the desires in the world, the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the, it is of the world. And the world is passing away. Whoa. The world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. In other words, there's a dismantling process. Little children, is the last hour, and if you had heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a what? You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Now, how do you keep that activated? Assemble. Drink the Spirit. Eat the flesh. Amen? The Word. Drink the Spirit. Eat the flesh. And confession. We're going to talk about some stuff Sunday. I'm telling you, God has been just releasing stuff. I can't keep up. I feel like I've been in a matrix with downloads. <laughs> I can fly a helicopter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Antichrist entities in human bodies, demons that reject the truth. Oh, hallelujah. Many who started off right have fallen. The Word tells us that many will fall from the faith. Taking heed to what? 
deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. These deceiving spirits are in bodies that are promoting doctrines of demons. These are not just spirits that you're hearing a voice from. These spirits you're hear seeing a voice come from a person. Jude 16, or yeah, verse 16. Glory. Verse 16. Oh, we're going to start at 14, though. Jude 14, now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to do what? Execute judgment on all. All. To convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. Now, I want you to grab hold of something because this is what's happening. We're in this process right now where the Spirit of God is convicting. He's doing judgment and convicting. Why? To turn hearts. He's exposing individuals. He's visiting, visiting, visiting them in dreams and so forth. Some of their best friends are now been touched by Christ. And now they're turning around and telling them. But they're rejecting them. See, it's going to be intense. It's going to be tremendous and overwhelming. Where people are, can't have an excuse to say they didn't know the truth or had an opportunity to accept it. Verse 16. These are grumblers. Oh, yes, grumbles. Grumblers and complainers. Oh, yeah. Serpent tongue carriers. Walking according to their own what? Lust. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which are spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that in the, and that there would be what? Mockers. Man, we're seeing it all over. Mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the spirit. That's phenomenal. Not having the spirit. They are lost. Living outside salvation's truth. Lost. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in tongues. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion. Making a distinction which one you're going to smack in the head and say, wake up. <laughs> Make sure they're not bigger than you. <laughs> or you're not alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. And some have compassion, making a distinction, but others say with what? Fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. And now to him who's able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever and ever and ever. They're not having the spirit. They don't have truth. They actually believe the deception is the, the truth. You know, they believe a lie of the truth. Second Thessalonians 2. speak it. Verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be what? Revealed. Whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to what? Uh, according to what? Working of Satan with all power, signs, and what? 
Lying wonders. Power, signs, and what? Lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of Christ that they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the what? That the lie. That they may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had pleasure, what? Oh, <laughs> in unrighteousness. Praise God. That they would believe the lie. This is what's happening right now. Amen? Go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Strong delusion. Remember, we are right now in a rehearsal to receive the mark of the beast. Amen? We're the restrainers. And we are also the dismantlers of Babylon. Does everybody understand that? Your position in prayers and warfare is dismantling Babylon. You are backing up. The U.S. military and all the physical military that is out going after the physical forces of Babylon, well, you and I are attacking the spiritual forces of Babylon, if you are. If you're not, shame on you. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and what? Truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. Well, if you can't expose your own, you've got no right to expose anybody else's. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who are asleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you life. Wow, that's dead men walking. We have a teaching on that. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? The days are what? Evil. I mean, they are really evil. Therefore, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk with wine, which in, in which is dissipation, but be what? Fill with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, and giving thanks always for all the things the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, has done for you, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord, not condemning one another. Amen? But exhorting one another. It's called the wine of deception. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Verse 25, Hebrews 12, 25. Dismantling Babylon. Glory. Woohoo. Let's speak it together. Hebrews 12, 25. Say that you do not refuse him who what? Speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he is promising, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the what? Again, you gotta, please grab this and look. How is he going to shake the heavens? Through your prayers. Does everybody get it? It's through your prayers. Through the body's prayers, that's how heaven's being shaken. 
Remember, the angels move on the word. Everything is done through the body now. Guided by the Spirit. Remember, the body is supposed to be ruling the earth. Amen? It lost position. But God is restoring the earth to the body. And then there'll be a full manifestation of the body with glorified bodies. Oh, hallelujah. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, hello, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Wow. I got God is allowing the shaken to expose, to target, to cut off, to remove wickedness, to push back, to establish the greatest harvest history's ever known, and then the removal of the church or the bride. Proverbs 23. Twenty three one. When you sit with someone who has authority, <laughs> and when you sit with someone or a ruler, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman given to appetite. This is not food he's talking about. Do not desire his delicacies for their what? Deceptive food. You know, some people will read anything. They'll, they'll just read whatever. Not realizing what they're reading. Amen? Or not realizing what they're eating. Pornography is deceptive food. Amen? There are certain magazines and books out there and so forth, the movies, that's deceptive food. There's media that's deceptive food. There's music that is deceptive food. There are so-called Christians that are deceptive food. Verse 4 says what? Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not for riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not what? With you. And the morsel so you've eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant, your pleasant words. Oh, hallelujah. Deceptive food from Media, music, false religions, doctrines of demons, and so forth. We're watching the falling away. There is a falling away. And even in this falling away, there's still a harvest. But again, many, there's going to be many who are not going to make it through. Many will run to the world. 1 Thessalonians 5. See, there's two kinds of fear. There's a reverence, honor, and respect of God Almighty. That's in relationship. When that is disconnected, there's the fear of knowing that you could not only lose your soul, but wake up in hell. Some people have broke both of them. They're not even in the outer court. They're in outer darkness now. They know the truth, but they refuse it. Then they drown themselves in their sorrows, in drugs, alcohol, and so forth. They're still looking for fulfillment. 
they become hunters of desire instead of surrenders of God's desire. Is everybody okay? First Thess 5. Is everybody there? Glory. Uh, verse 1. Let's speak it. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord is, comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and the sons of the day. We are not of the night nor darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be what? Sober, which means alert. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet and as a helmet of hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to what? His wrath. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake physically or sleep passed away, we should live together with him. Therefore comfort each other and, and edify one another just as also you are what? Doing. It is the time to stand and fight spiritually and physically. In other words, being bold. Not accepting, not cowering down. Standing up. It's a time to fight, to stand for the kingdom of Christ and his harvest of souls. Keeping your restraints active. The restraints of your flesh active. In Matthew 24. Hallelujah. Again, there's simple words that you can share with someone. Allowing, without offending them. Well, they might get offended anyways most of the time. I guess you can't really help that, can you? Who told you that? Who told you you're a homosexual? Who told you that you're not worthy? Who told you? Who told you to vote for Hillary? <laughs> Who told you not to vote for Trump? In other words, bring the person away from themselves to the reality of the unseen influence. Who told you that? Amen? Who told you to act like that? Who told you to say that? It's real simple. Who told you to write that? Amen? Who told you that? Matthew 24, verse 3. Now, as Jesus said in the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age of grace. And Jesus answered and said, to them, take heed that no one what? I mean, the first thing he says, make sure nobody deceives you. <laughs> make sure, well, that means you need to be connected to the truth. Amen? You need to be connected to the presence of God. Remember, there's no power without any of his presence. I don't care how much word you have. Without backing of his presence, you ain't got no power. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. There's a lot of wolves, sheep's clothing out there now. And most of them are promoters of racism. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. That means you will hear many lies. See that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. 
for nation, ethnic group will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines. Man, there are some tremendous famines in the world right now. It's amazing how, many, how much people throw out food when there are children dying all over the world. Can you imagine that a, a, a baby, a child, has a stomach flu and can't get any help and dies of dehydration? with everything that's in the world. But then their rulers and their dictators are sitting with loads of food and water and servants and wealth and traveling here and there. It's amazing how many places, in fact, even our own uh, governors, mayors, and so forth and whatever, and, and uh, uh, all of these congressmen and congresswomen and whatever, they're claiming global warming, but they get in their own private jet and fly wherever. They want all, all new things. They want to take away air flight and whatever, but they ain't going to give up their plane. They don't want to build a wall, but they won't take theirs down. Bunch of stinking hypocrites. That's what Satan's kingdom is all about. Hypocrite. That's what's accusing of the brethren. Amen. They're accusing people all the time. They're accusing righteous all the time. You hear it. It's constant. Righteous persecution, accusing, and then they lie about everything. Why? Because they're being dismantled. So they got to try and lie their way out. They are losing, you know. They think they're winning. Even their polls say they're winning, but their polls lie. They're lying polls. And there will be famines and pestilence. Well, we got fake pestilence. We got real pestilence. Amen. Hallelujah. And earthquakes in various places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation. And they will attempt to kill you. And you will be hated by all of these nations. For my name's sake. The many will be offended. And will betray one another and will hate one another. The many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. In other words, much false media. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will go what? Cold. It's going to grow cold. But he who dure, endures to the end will be what? Saved. And this gospel, the kingdom, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. Wow. Now, we see many call themselves Christians. We're going to hear of wars, lies, rumors of wars, many deceptive things. We're going to see ethnic groups and racism arise even greater than what's happening now. The kingdom of light will Against the kingdom of darkness, the battle will increase. Wickedness will increase, but also will righteousness. Famines, lack of freedom, access to... <laughs> right now, people can't live a normal life. They're preventing everything to that degree. Think of what's going on right now. People are really veiled, aren't they? They're wearing that mask. They're veiled. They did a test about people wearing a mask, about the carbon. And they were tested it right there. And within 30 seconds, the carbon in the mask was dangerous to the person. Within 30 seconds. So people are wearing these. It's amazing to me why people are jogging outside with a mask. <laughs> and they think they're getting healthy when they're actually poisoning themselves. The toxic, because you're exhaling carbon. Amen? Carbon, what? They're not, whatever it's called. You're exhaling poison, let's say that. So you're just breathing it back in. The longer you do that, the more toxic you get. You know what's going to happen? You're going to get plagued. <laughs> They're going to label it Corona. You've been corona. No, I've been masked. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, it's incredible. Plagues, viruses, flus, we'll see shakings of great, great proportions. Greater proportions will there be shakings. Attacks against Jews and Christians will increase. You know, I was watching the, uh, something, and even Farrakhan, the head of the Muslim regime, he was saying, telling all of his people, do not take any vaccinations. I said, man, the dude finally told the truth. He said, and he accused Gates, he's trying to depopulate, de 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 kill people. He's trying to bring down the population. So he's, he's on, on the websites and on the news. Here's Farrakhan. I thought, wow. Praise God, there's something we can agree on. That's it. <laughs> Many will easily be provoked to violence and hatred. This is it. Jesus said this. That's what he's talking about in Matthew 24. <laughs> Uncontrollable disorder will be allowed. <laughs> Uncontrollable disorder will be allowed against those that protect and maintain the law. Love will grow cold with no respect to elders or mankind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But those who endure will be standing because they eat the word of God and drink the presence of God. Amen. Matthew 25. Oh, we're right there. Hallelujah. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. And all the nations will be what? Gathered before Him. And He will separate them one from another as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. This is where the separation will be from the bride and the body. And He will set the sheep on His right hand and the goats on his left, they're going to turn left. They were right, now they're going to turn left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In verse 41, then he will also say to those on the left, I mean, you think it's a coincidence he's discussing the left and the right? <laughs> the blue and the red? Hello? Why? The red, eat, it's associated with the blood? The blue is the blue blood. Does everybody get this? What is the blue blood? The Niflum race. And you also say to those on the left, for all the lefties out there, depart from me. You cursed. You promoters of abortion, perversion. Depart from me. You're cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For you call yourself Christians, yet you promote what I hate. Oh, happy days. Verse 46. And what will happen to them? And these will go away into what? Everlasting punishment. But the righteous into what? Eternal life. I told you there was no position for Democrats in heaven. There it is, back by the word. Hallelujah. Left is in hell. Right's in heaven. Psalm 64. Ahem. <clears throat> 
Psalm 64. Verse 1. Is everybody okay? Are you participating in the dismantling of Babylon? Amen? Again, if you're not, shame on you. Then you're a taker, not a giver. Verse 1, let's speak it. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, that they might shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. In other words, they don't fear what's going to happen to them for what they're doing. Because you, what you sow is what you reap. They encourage themselves in evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. We have perfected a shrewd scheme. Man, they just keep doing it, don't they? Over and over and over, but that doesn't prosper. It just exposes them more. Amen. They're accusing all kinds of people, this, this, whatever. It's amazing to me. I mean, they're just outright doing it. Can you imagine? Just think about that. Have we ever seen a political setting where a president gives a speech when everybody's there and the House speaker stands up and rips his speech in front of everyone? She should have been shot and killed on them right there. Now, that may sound crude, but let me tell you, if somebody did that years ago, that's what would have happened. They would have called that treason. There wouldn't have been no question or trial. It would have been guilty, boom, but not anymore because too much blue has taken position. The swamp smells, and that's what God is doing right now because the swamp is the promoters and holders of the Babylonian system. It says they devise iniquities. We have perf perfected a scheme, a shrewd scheme, but the inward thought and the heart of the man are what? Deep. Verse 7. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they will be wounded. So he will make them stumble over their own what? Tongue. That means that they're going to expose themselves. All who see them shall flee away. All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. For they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him. And all the upright in heart shall glory. And I'm going to close at Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Verse 8. <clears throat> Psalm 33, verse 8. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen as his own inheritance. See, we're blessed. Why? Because this nation's being turned back to the Lord. And Babylon is getting kicked out. Verse 13. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men 
from the place of his dwelling, he looks. And all the inhabitants of the earth, he fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by the great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who what? Fear him. On those who what? Hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in what? Famine. We ain't got nothing to worry about. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. You're allowing us to have a front row seat and participate in the dismantling of the Babylon, Babylonian system where the heart is being exposed, false religions, doctrines of demons, and all the political evil wi wickedness. We thank you. Keep your people encouraged, Father. Keep them strong in the Lord and the power of your might. And keep us alert and ready that we may see, that we may hear, and that we may do according to your will. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the Lord.